Hi everyone, my name is Gaurav and welcome back to the channel. About a month ago on our LinkedIn, I expressed my interest in creating a series about Docker, containers and everything cloud native kind of. In general, unfortunately, COVID happened and I could never start. But hey, it's always better to be late than never. So let's get started. Now, before we jump into containers and Docker and all the details that goes behind the scenes, let's start from the very basics and try understand why we really need containers and what actually happened that led to the evolution of containers in general so containers is not something is not magic that is happening and uh, it's, it's it's based on the technologies that have been there in the linux kernels uh, in the linux kernel for ages and decades now but before we get into all those details let's take a step back let's talk from the very very beginning so I'll try and not to bore you with slides. I'll stay on the engineering side and keep things uh, to the minimal. We will draw, we will fail <laughs> for sure, and uh, we will learn together. So let's uh, talk about applications. Every business is all about applications. Amazon, Flipkart, Facebook, it's all about applications even the smallest businesses that are there even if you are starting a, your own business or even if you are starting a side project what you're aiming for is build an application that would provide your users some facility something that they look for or something that is useful to them so in a nutshell what's the key point here is the applications are the primary important thing now before containers containers happened before virtualization happened there was a one-to-one -one relation between uh, applications and and your servers. So basically what you have to do, what used to happen is uh, you'd have one application, uh, if I can type application correctly, and you would deploy it on a one single server. And when I'm talking about server, I'm referring to one, one physical, physical machine that you would uh, mount somewhere in your rack or host it somewhere even if yeah at that time there was no cloud or anything so businesses when they wanted to spin up new applications if they want to provide a new application for their business to the users what they would do is buy a new server which uh, and each server uh, when we talk about server it basically consists of things like CPU, uh, memory, and storage, network, and many more things. Now, it becomes really difficult for business to decide whether what kind of configuration is good for their application needs. So what they did was to, was very obvious. They would buy something big, that a big server that would satisfy the needs of their particular application. Now, unfortunately, what happened was, let's say if you're running an Nginx server, it does not take a lot of compute of, of your system. And what you end up is consuming about five to 10% of your whole capacity. And what you lose is nearly about 90% of what you could actually do with your server. So one application running on one single server. And let's say if you have a stack which uses MySQL, Nginx, your say java based application every single thing uh, like uh, you will have one server for one uh, one server for mysql one server for nginx and then you have for your java app you will have one server and things like that would happen ultimately you will have multiple servers waiting lying there for more compute to happen and that was a whole wastage of resources and there was no good way of, you know, okay. So you may think that why not deploy all these applications onto one single server? Well, back then or even now, there is no good way of isolating applications from each other. Now, definitely you can run these three on one for sure, because they are using, they're going to use different uh, libraries, different ports, then probably you can deploy them on a single server. But if you want to have multiple instances of a Java application running on the same server, this will become problematic. Because uh, let's say if you want to uh, have different versions of a certain library that you use in your application to have to be used by different instances. Let, I mean, your Java app one is using V1 of certain library 
and your Java in app instance for uses v2 for a certain library. This is nearly impossible at this event today to have those two those a single library to have different versions on the same system. So that kind of isolation is not possible with a physical server. Now, then came the age of virtualization. Now, virtualization could mean diff something different or different people perceive virtualization differently. What we are talking about here is hypervisor based virtualization, meaning you have a, a single physical server. If, why can't I spell physical? You have one physical server, which will again have compute, CPU, storage, network, and all that. And what you'd basically do is you carve out of it different virtual machines, which look and feel exactly as if you were have you were on a physical machine, basically. You create a VM1, and then you have multiple copies of it. And that's how you create VMs, not like not like I'm creating them by dragging and dropping, not like that, but you basically get the idea. And so on and so forth, you can have multiple virtual machines running on the same physical server. Now, previously what we used to have is this kind of model. We had a physical server on top of which sits an operating system so bear with me while I'm drawing things because this is something I want to be good at and I think it's really nice as an engineer to be able to draw. So it sits on top of it is your operating system and then we used to have our applications or basically a single application running on it. Now this is your app. Let's remove them. And this was basically the model. And uh, what now happened is because we have virtual machines, we can have multiple applications running on top of these VMs. So what actually has happened is you have increased the utilization. Now your physical server, which was running at a capacity of 5%, which is now carved into different virtual machines, which look and feel exactly like your physical server are, are now capable of running different applications on top of the same physical server. So this would increase the capacity to at least like 50%, 70% or 90% depends on how you're uh, optimizing your virtualization, how you're deciding which applications to run on top of those physical server. So yeah, this, this is basically what happens. Um, now, one thing that is missing here is the oops is the hypervisor now those hypervisors were these could be like kvm vmware even the, the one that we that we generally use is virtualbox so i'm going to list it here as well some people would argue that okay when you have a hypervisor there there is always a layer of operating system now this is this depends on where or not where depending on what kind of hypervisor using whether you are using a type 1 hypervisor or you are using a type 2 hypervisor the operating system layer sits either on top of the hypervisor or below the hypervisor uh, some people argue that operating system will always be uh, below the hypervisor but again it depends that's that's my argument to that so let's if we look at this now this looks great because from about uh, oops, from about five percent what am i doing from about five to ten percent utilization we have reached to a utilization for which is absolutely going to be more than 50%. So I'm going to greater than 50%. Yeah, this looks great, right? At least you are making good use of the amount. Now, there are certain things that are not good about this model. And we will talk about it in just a bit.